Hello everyone. So uh, today I'll be going into uh, the second part of chapter 10 which will be on mobile multimedia. Okay, so the first question that I want to ask you is how do you think mobile devices have impacted our lives? As we all know previously, um, you know, in the older generation, it is pretty hard for us to carry um, devices around because everything is wired. So um, nowadays, everything is mobile, meaning that you can bring it everywhere. So when we talk about mobile devices, we talk about things like our smartphones, our laptop, tablets, things like that. That. So how are how have those devices impacted our lives? They have impacted us in many many ways. So you know, for example, if I give you this question, if you had to choose between leaving the house in the morning with a wireless mobile devices or your wallet, which one would you choose? I would say not everyone would choose their wallet because with the current technologies that we have right now, with just your mobile devices, we can actually pay for stuff. You know, we have things like e-wallet right now. So even if we leave our wallet at home, we can still, you know, survive. We can still pay for things, you know, because, we, because basically we can do apps, almost absolutely everything with our mobile devices. And that is just how far our technology has become nowadays. Okay, so according to a 2012 survey, which was like a long time ago, 44% of the 4,700 survey respondents worldwide indicated they would take their mobile devices. Even then, a lot of the people would, you know, actually take their mobile devices. I mean, if you ask the people now, I would say majority of them probably would be more than 80% would bring their mobile devices around instead of their wallet. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So um, let's talk about the digital revolution when it comes to. Um, mobile devices or mobile multimedia okay in terms of the retail area you know retail we talk about um, um, consumers we talk about sellers okay so uh, retailers can actually um, push tailored messages about store specials and sales when we talk about push meaning that we are um, forcing um, messages onto the consumers um, if you notice things like you know sometimes whenever we go to a store and they ask for our mobile number okay and then afterwards we would get you know promotions like messages um, regarding their promotions and stuff that is push messages okay so um, to shoppers who have signed up to receive such message so sometimes you know you know retailers would want to get our um, uh, information just so that they will be able to give those kind of um, advertisement or those push, push messages to their consumers. Okay, so um, another thing that they could do is um, using smartphones that um, have GPS, because most mobile devices nowadays have GPS, um, they could, you know, push uh, those messages according to their location as well. So sometimes, um, maybe if we are using application like Waze, um, they would like pop up um, messages like oh there is a KFC nearby you know that is a push message based on your current location using GPS okay even um, you can even use QR code as well because with QR code we can just take our mobile devices scan it and then it could give us promotions or uh, give us you know links and so on and, and stuff okay so um, that's what retailers can do to uh, basically cater for people who are um, FOMO. So FOMO basically means fear of missing out. Personally, I'm a FOMO <laughs> because, you know, I do sometimes, you know, whenever I like certain brands, I would want to get, you know, um, promotional um, messages from them so that I know when the sales are on. So these are perfect for people who are afraid of missing out on those kind of sales and discounts and things like that. Okay. And um, another thing that is uh, really big nowadays is, you know, what I've said earlier, e-wallet. Okay, retail payments can easily be done within mobile application using debit cards or credit cards. So, um, you know, again, with the whole pandemic thing, um, we don't have to go outside to buy stuff. We can just use our debit card and shop online. Even you use a credit card as well. Okay, even if we do go outside and we don't bring our wallet, we can just use e-wallet. So, um, you know, there are many things that retailers can make use of mobile devices to cater for their um, businesses. 
Okay, um, next we have is education. So when it comes to education, um, nowadays inside the classroom, we, you know, with the traditional approach, um, you know, lecturers or teachers would just use their whiteboard or blackboard and uh, projectors and basically that's that. All you see is just like a one-way communication. Not exactly one-way communication, but it's just a display. So um, with um, the current, um, you know, devices, things like your tablets, okay, your phones, you can use uh, applications to make the classroom a lot more interesting. Okay, you don't even have to bring books. You can just use ebook, okay? So everything is a lot easier nowadays. So if you take a look here, uh, mobile learning has become more common and realistic because, you know, students all majority of students nowadays have their own devices so us lecturers or us educators can cater um you know the basically make use of the devices that all the students have and uh, you know inside certain classroom we do have a concept called bring your own devices so meaning that um learning can learning and teaching can also be done um using mobile devices Okay, so um, yeah, so as you take a look here with the notes, um, mobile devices are used for education and homework assignments. Okay, even nowadays, um, since we're all stuck at home, okay, we're using Google Classroom. Okay, so we can um, submit our assignments there. Okay, um, and again, computing skills such as programming and app development are taught in school. If you notice that, um, even in primary school, um, they um, not uh, they would support or give or provide um, subjects such as computer science to allow for the current generation to learn more about how apps can be developed how we can do programming because every single thing nowadays uses technology so that is why we have to kind of move forward from that okay so education mobile applications can be used to teach and carry out activities in class again like i've said we can use apps within our phones like kahoot okay or google classroom or you know whatever other teaching and learning application that is suitable within the class okay next thing we have are for travel so when we travel we can just bring our phone around uh, because inside our phone we have a uh, gps so gps allow uh, the mobile devices to track where we are currently so um you know with the um uh you know, if you think back um, with our parents and stuff, or when I was younger, um, it's hard for us to get around because there is no GPS system. So, um, let's say if I want to go to a certain place, I would need to open up a map to kind of figure out how I'm going to go from place to place. So nowadays, everything is so easy because we can just use things like Waze, Google Map. So um, with GPS, they are able to sort of um, bring us along the route or bring us along where we want to go and track our current location. Okay, so again, using GPS-based mobile application, transportations can easily be booked as well. So if we don't drive our car, we can just use Grab Car or we can just use... Um, I don't know even nowadays we have food panda you know um, using our phone so they can track where we are and just you know pass the food to us so everything is really easy with things like this okay and then um, information can even be sent to mobile devices through short message service messages meaning that sometimes whenever we buy something online um, um, we can even get the tickets or the information back to us through SMS or emails and things like that so it's really easy for us to get by Okay, um, another area that we have is games, entertainment, and home. So um, one of the reasons why kids love mobile devices is because of the games that can be played. Even when we're bored, um, we can just use our phones, play with games, open up YouTube, open up Netflix, Spotify, whatever, so for our own entertainment. Okay, so um, within our mobile devices as well, um, we have certain technologies that allow us to um, make greater use of this application for example we have touch screen and accelerometer so um the things that make us um using our mobile devices easier because of the touch screen so we can just use we can just swipe around swipe tilt and so on so to allow us to use all of these motions um meaning touching the screen tapping swiping tilting okay 
it is due to the technology of touch screen and also accelerometer accelerometer is a sensor for measuring the tilting motion and orientation of a mobile phone meaning that within our phone we have this accelerometer that allow us to sort of um uh, the mobile devices allow us to um, detect the motion of our phone whether our, whether we tilt it or we like do that and so on okay so um, yeah so again in our phones okay we have music players such as Spotify's iMusic okay iMusic yeah <laughs> and we have movie theater television streaming applications so we have youtube we have netflix okay and we also um within our phone we are able to have a smart home system so if you have i don't know if you've heard of like um alexa um what's it called um uh, google home okay so um you're able to connect all these devices within using our phone so let's say we turn on the um, tv or we turn on the um, washing machine it is just by using our mobile phone instead of us going to that machine and turning it on manually okay so everything can be done with using our mobile devices okay let's now talk about the hardware that is used um, within our mobile devices okay so um the thing that make it the device is mobile, meaning that it can be carried around it's because of the size. The size is very compact, it's very small. For example, your smartphone is just the size of your palm. Okay, so um, even though it is small in size, it is many times more powerful than older devices. So um, I have provided here, sorry, I have provided here like an old. Um, so let's talk about laptops. Okay, laptop is a mobile device, meaning that you can carry around. Basically, laptop is a mobile version. Um, um, of a computer, a standalone computer. So you have your um, PC, that your personal computer that is on the desk. So that is too big for you to carry around. And that's why we make laptops or tablets, okay? So that we are able to bring it everywhere we go. So um, if you take a look here, we have Osborne. This is the first portable uh, microcomputer. So you can see it's pretty big, it's pretty huge. And, and um, the laptops nowadays are very slim. Okay, um, even it gets slimmer by the year, by the day. Um, if you take a look at your laptop, uh, previously, the things that make the laptop pretty big and pretty thick is because of like the CD drives. Okay, um, so since we don't have, they took it out, so your your laptop becomes a lot more smaller. Okay, um, yeah, even though it is smaller, but it is still really really powerful. Okay, um, due to miniaturization, miniaturization of telephone handset, radio networks allow mobile devices to communicate with each other. So um, with phones that we carry around everywhere, if we want to connect to the internet, we want to call people, okay, we need to connect to a, um, a tower, a cell phone tower. Okay, basically um, these radio networks allow us to, um, you know, call each other to connect to the internet and so on. Okay. Um, due to miniaturization of desktop computers, internet connected tablet has rev revolutionized people do business and educate themselves. Again, um, we have laptops. Okay, first of all, we have uh, your PC that is on your table, and then to make it mobile, they make laptops. So with laptops, it is pretty big to carry around as well. So if you want to go to a meeting or you know somewhere some somewhere quick and you just want to do um, um, a little discussion but you still want the screen on you so um, they have invented tablets so which is a smaller version of your laptop or your desktop computers okay so in order for us to uh, connect to the internet so all of these devices are able to um, connect to the internet using um, radio networks okay um, again, uh, within our mobile devices, things like laptops or um, tablets or phones, okay, we have touch screen. So this touch screen allow uh, for multi-touch gestures, things like tap, double tap, okay, we have drag, slide, so all these things will do different things according to your motions, okay. Um, again, um, a little bit further than that, okay, your phones uh, provide 3D touch as well, okay. What 3D touch is um, uh, where it allows the fingertips um, to be touching the glass, but um, it allows for a pressure sensitivity feature. So if you notice that with your phone, if you actually click on, let's say you click on an application and then you click on a little bit longer and you click it a bit harder, okay, then something will pop up, okay. So that is called a 3D touch. Okay, so things like pick and pop where you just want to preview things on your application, you can just 
click it I mean hold on the onto the app a little bit longer and a little bit harder then it will pop up instead of opening up the application okay so this is like a different um, version of the multi-touch gesture which is called the 3d touch okay um, all right so um, the heart of your mobile devices is actually using um, system on a chip technology so SOC technology so um, mobile devices as we all know is very small it's very compact so we can't be using like a huge motherboard like you see in our laptop so they make things very small so uh, they use a thing called the system on a chip SOC technology so uh, basically if you take a look here this it contains like a single chip so within that um, chip you have all of these different components like CPU you have memory you have IO port you have audio components graphic processors secondary sorry so everything is contained within that one chip okay so um, it is able to um, compact to basically uh, can include all the other devices not devices all the other components within that one thing that you can find in our laptops but they make it a lot smaller so that you know it fits within our phones okay so um for example here apple introduced a7 soc which appeared in iphone 5s so um for example with iphone 5s okay within their soc okay um they even included a secure enclave biometric security so uh, this technology allows for your um, soc to be able to store and um fingerprints to store fingerprints and detect those fingerprints for locking your phone unlocking your phone etc okay all right so moving on to mobile connections um as we all know for us to call someone for us to um do something with our phone uh, like connecting things okay um we need connections so um when it comes to our mobile device um we can connect four different things at once okay so it allows us for four different connections so first of all is voice and data communication so this is for calling okay um and we also have wi-fi wi-fi hotspot okay so this allows us to connect to a wi-fi network um so for example when we call we can also have wi-fi connected to our phone as well so we have four these different channels that won't be interrupted when we do one thing over another okay so we have one um, channel for voice and data communications um so things like calling okay things like connecting to your um um was it called mobile data okay and then you also have wi-fi hotspot so this is connecting to your internet at home okay and then we also have bluetooth so for us to connect to our um, airpods or earphones or um, speakers okay things like that and then we also have nfc so nfc allows a mobile device to establish communication to another device by bringing them within four centimeters of each other what this is is basically it's a technology whereby we can scan things onto another device things like uh, we do it for um, paying stuff so let's say you have e-wallet or i mean you just use your phone to connect to a different device something like that okay um, so basically um when we are connected to a cell tower okay we want to make calls how um, it is done is we are using a thing called the session initiation protocol SIP so this is a standard protocol that is used to allow devices to identify and authenticate each each other so in order for um, mobile devices to actually um, connect to one another and allow us to make calls okay it uses SIP which is called the session initiation protocol so um, with this protocol it allow those devices to recognize each other okay and when they are recognized um, then um, the protocol will be able to set up the calls by initiating that session and then whenever they close the call they will end that communicating session okay so that is how um, SIP works session initiation protocol okay so um, whenever you want to make a call to somebody okay um, or we want to use internet and things like that okay um, we have to connect to a technology um, whether using a CDMA or GSM so um, all mobile devices they will be using any of these two technology so for example you have your iPhone so you have your Samsung phones okay so um, for for those devices to um, make calls okay um, to connect to different mobile devices as well um, they'll be using either of these two technology 
okay either cdma or gsm okay so let me explain this thing these two things first okay so cdma stands for code division multiple access so um and gsm on the other hand stands for global system for mobile communications so these two technology will actually depend on where you are so for example um i'm in malaysia so malaysia uses gsm um global system for mobile communication so basically majority or all of the mobile devices that are sold here uses this technology okay with gsm we use sim cards okay with cdma for example in the us okay certain mobile devices uses this mobile technology okay um where they don't have a sim card so the difference between the two is what is the purpose of a sim card sim card allow for the um tower for whenever we are connecting through that um, protocol to make connection okay um, it allows for the um, uh, network to recognize your device okay so um, when they are recognized and they are able to make calls and so on so um, again um, with different providers same things like Maxis or Cellcom they all have their own frequencies that allow for their network to um, recognize the um, the devices okay so with sim card with each sim card they have their own mobile phone numbers um the subscriber information network information and so on for the network to recognize your device of who you are okay so um example of carrier network we have like maxis or southcom in malaysia or in the us we have at&t and t-mobile okay but with uh but in the us there are also other um providers carrier networks uh, such as sprint verizon and us cellular where they use cdma so cdma their mobile devices don't have um sim cards okay so when they don't have sim cards um the network will recognize the mobile devices itself instead of the sim card okay because um the within that phone itself okay it contains all those information but the thing here is with a CDMA, if you, let's say you want to um, change your carrier network, okay, let's say you want to go from one carrier network to another, okay, for example, moving from Maxis to Cellcom, in Malaysia, we can just change out the SIM card, okay? But if you use a CDMA, you can't, since there's no SIM card, you can't just change that little small thing. You have to change the whole phone in order for you to change your provider. Do you get what I mean? Okay? Because all of the information are stored within that handset. Okay, so um, this SIM card or uh, GSM or CDMA, CDMA will provide a communication between the mobile phones, um, which will convert voice and data into radio waves differently. So we need this technology in order to convert the data and send them from one device to another. Okay? So um, let's say we have connected to a CDMA or GSM, then um, we would use either of this technology, which is a voice over internet protocol, VOIP or PSTN. So um, VOIP, um, um, basically the calls that we do actually uses internet protocol. Okay, it uses internet connection to make calls. Your voice is transmit transmitted as data over the internet. So. Um, if you notice that we have things like 3G, 4G, things like that, okay, um, we use VOIP, okay, so it uses internet connection to make calls, so that's why we have those cell towers, all right, um, but with landlines, okay, so let's say we call from the phone to a landline, um, it will switch to a public switch telephone network, okay so um these um landlines are actually connected using copper fi copper wires or fiber optic cables um so our phone will actually use those connection to get to actually connect to a landline okay so these wires run underground and connect to every other landline phone across the world through network so um different landline phone can easily connect to one another because they are connected through that land uh through that fiber optic cables and so on but for our phones okay um if you want to make call from mobile devices to another mobile devices then it would use voip instead okay all right so again with communication protocol all right um, um communication protocol or network signals okay from 
basically it is based on where we are and how close we are to the um, tower okay cell tower okay um, the network signal or communication protocol um, is used to control the movement of information on the radio connection between mobile devices and cell tower so um, we have your cell tower you have your mobile device so these communication protocols such as 3g 4g eh okay so this protocol allow for the information um, within this network to be controlled okay um, using um, radio signals okay so um, it will uh, manage voice and data on the radio connection using standard desk technology so this basically this is a technology this is a protocol that um, allow for the um, data to be um, uh, transferred from one device to another okay so uh, we have things like e 3g h 4g 4g lt and so on so e stands for edge um, so this usually occurs in weak signal area so um, if you take a look at 4g or 4g lte so this is the fastest connection currently um, in the future there will be a 5g um, but in Malaysia I don't think they have set up the cell tower for 5g yet okay but I think there will be one in the future okay so um, if you are pretty further away from the cell tower or um, area kampung or something okay you might um, experience E or 3g okay third generation or um, even H or H plus so this is a bit faster than 3g but the fastest one that we have currently is 4g or 4g LTE okay Okay, so the next connection that we have within our mobile devices is Wi-Fi. Okay, Wi-Fi allows a mobile device to connect to the internet with a faster connection than 4G. Um, so, you know, if we compare um, our mobile data using 4G and also Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi connection is a lot faster. Okay, um, so, you know, whether, you know, of course for less cost if not for free because sometimes with our Wi-Fi it provides like, a different package so um, unlimited internet you know using that network you know that's just an example even for free meaning that if you go to Starbucks or if you go to different shops they would provide free Wi-Fi as well I mean that's why people people prefer to use Wi-Fi instead of the mobile data that we use that is very limited that we pay for okay so um with wi-fi it has a range uh, between 30 meters indoors and 100 meters outdoors so um, let's say you have a home network and you go outside and uh, um, the connection will be lost if you go further away from the wi-fi's range okay so in order for us to set up our wi-fi our hotspot okay um, we need a modem and we also need a router and also a wireless access point so these three things allow us to connect to a wi-fi network okay all right so uh, next we have is bluetooth so bluetooth is a very short range low power radio technology to interconnect up to seven devices by radio so um the reason why we have bluetooth is instead of using wires to connect to different devices we can use bluetooth instead but with bluetooth the um the the radio connection or the the connection is actually very very short so uh, let's say we have our ipods or we have our speakers okay um it won't be detected if we go further than the um, range that it provides okay um, yeah so with Bluetooth you can actually connect to different um, Bluetooth devices up to seven devices okay so um, for example you have a hands-free headset or automobile audio system when we get into our car we connect to our car system Bluetooth car system okay so all, all of these uh, devices are able to be connected using Bluetooth all right so moving on to operating system okay so we have talked about hardware now we talk about the inside of our um, phone so we have our operating system that is um, basically OS is used to control all the other applications within our phone okay so um, depending on what devices you're using you can either use an Android OS or iOS so if you're using Apple products then you're using iOS if you are using other than Apple then you probably are using Android okay so Android is was actually developed by Android Incorporation which is a 22 month old startup which which has been purchased by Google in 2005 okay so basically um, Android is an open source operating system for mobile devices so um, but it is maintained by Google all right so if you take a look at android um, os okay the names are very i find it very cute okay because they uses um 
um, dessert. So we have Froyo, which stands for frozen yogurt, right? Gingerbread, honeycomb, ice cream sandwich, jelly bean, Kika. So these are the um, updates of the, um, um, uh, what's it called? The, the Android OS, okay? So um, the current, uh, in 2013, um, the Android uh, OS has been upgraded called KitKat okay and then we also have iOS so iOS is an operating system developed by Apple okay so it was developed in 2007 as an OS for the new iPhone using multi-touch gestures okay um, it is a proprietary closed source operating system developed and owned by Apple so when we talk about open source and closed source closed source uh, meaning that it is um, created or developed specifically for that particular company okay so um, other brands or other um, uh, sources cannot use this um, technology since it is developed within um, for that device within that company whereas open source open source is mm, in simple words it's public okay so since it's public um, all different brands or different manufacturers can actually make use of this operating system within their phones so that is why um, companies other than Apple would use Android okay so you have Samsung you have um, Huawei, Oppo and so on okay so with iOS um, the versions they don't have um, like names cute names like Android so they use uh, numbers instead like 3.13 7.05 okay uh, 13 and so on okay all right so then we talk about um, then I'm gonna be talking about programming mobile apps so apps is applications or mobile applications that you find inside your phone so these mobile applications are developed by programmers or developers so um, when we have um, the apps within the phone um, they can either be these two um, types which is a native um, a native app or a hybrid app okay so um, for you to determine which one is which uh, will depend on how it is developed okay so a native app is built on a specific platform so we have things like calculator you have angry birds you have um, note note the notes on your phone okay so um, how they are um, developed is they are developed specifically for that particular platform okay so let's say I develop a Android application so I might use Java Okay, so I know that this application will be a standalone inside my um, I, uh, my Android phone, my Android phone, my mobile phone using Android OS. Okay, or if I'm using Apple uh, iPhone, okay, um, and I know that I'm creating a mobile device, a mobile application for that. Okay, um, then I might um, use um, Object to see. Um, to develop it for example okay so um, there are of course there are many um, language that can be used to develop your mobile apps but this is just an example that I'm giving you okay so whenever you develop a mobile mobile application you need to know where uh, the target device is so when you know the target device it is called a native app okay so you are building that application specifically for that um, platform all right so if you're building an android application then that application would be um in the version in the version in the um, form of apk which is android application package but if you're building it for ios okay it is called ipa iphone application archive all right so depending on which mobile device you use the version is different that's why sometimes whenever you see certain um applications inside App Store you can't find in um, Google Store okay because certain application um, they have their own target platform okay so depending on which device you use the the version of the application is different okay so that is native app whereas hybrid app hybrid app is also built on a specific platform okay whether you want to build it for iOS or you want to build it for um, um, Android okay again it will either be APK or IPA but the language that is used or the technology that is used is using a web technology so instead of writing it using Java or Objective-C you're using um, uh, web-based um, programming languages such as HTML5, CSS, JavaScript okay so um, these devices will um, kind of um, will need to sort of um, have a relation with the servers and so on so you're using web technology 
um, when you're developing the application okay um, again with hybrid app it says here it is easier to program you don't have to learn multiple complex language um, because all you're using is just internet um, friendly uh, technology web uh, uh, program language what am I talking about okay um, okay so when it comes to your native app as well okay you can use frameworks or IDE that can help you to develop mobile application so um, for example here okay we have frameworks and IDE okay um, IDE stands for integrated development environments so this is a development environment whereby you can use this to write your codes okay to run it and also to debug it Okay, so all of these things can be done within that one IDE. So, um, for example, if you're uh, creating an Android application, you can use Android Studio. Okay, within Android Studio, you can write your code because inside there, there's editor. And you can run it because it has the compiler interpreter. And you can also debug your codes and find errors and run your application. Okay, um, so other examples, you have Eclipse, PhoneGap, and Xamarin. Okay, also, okay, um, if you want to make things a bit easier for you, you can use framework. Framework is a generic structure which can be used to develop an application. In simpler terms, it is a software component that someone else wrote that you can use and integrate into your own project. So um, it is kind of like a template, you might say that, okay, whereby um, it is a structure um, that can be used to make your, uh, instead of, you know, programming, programming it from scratch you can use the structure that it gives and makes your um, you know um, application development a lot easier okay so you have things like jQuery mobile mobile native script Adobe flex flutter and so on okay so there's a difference between the two all right so when we are developing our mobile application nowadays it is important for us to cater for responsive web design rwd so um whenever we develop an application for the um uh for your mobile device it is important for us to think about um how how will it be displayed on different devices so um sometimes whenever we uh, do websites Okay, so I'm taking a website as an example. Okay, you have to think about not everyone uses the computer to open up that website. So we need to cater for all the other devices such as tablets and even phones in order for the website to look um, good in all different devices. Okay, so when we apply this technique, it is called a responsive web design, whereby the web pages can be viewed using many different devices with different screen sizes. Okay, so those web pages will adapt to its content to fit any device. So if you take a look here, um, this is how the website is designed. If you open it, you open it up using a desktop, okay, and this is how it looks when you open it up using a tablet. So the the layout is a bit different, okay. So the layout of the uh, web will sort of automatically shift or adapt um, depending on where it is viewed. Okay, so if it is viewed in tablet, it looks like this. If it is viewed on a mobile phone, then it'll be a lot more compact. Okay, you might need to scroll a lot more, etc. Okay, so um, to cater for responsive web design, um, you might need to use CSS and HTML to automatically fit those design onto any screen. Okay, so a website that has RWD needs to have a flexible layout, so um, so that all of the mobile devices can be opened up without losing any of the content on the screen. Okay, so maybe um, on the desktop, you can see everything on the get-go, okay? But with the mobile device, since it's a lot smaller, okay? Since we don't want to lose any of the content, we might put it inside a different tab or like a drop-down menu and things like that, okay? So those are basically um, um, the basics on how mobile multimedia works nowadays okay so i guess that's it for today so bye everyone